Hey, this is Tom, Thomas Allenberg, talking to you from Waikiki uh, on a beautiful sunset here in Honolulu, Hawaii. And I just want to say hello and thank you once again to Marianne Williamson. Take a look at this right here. She came into my life in the 1980s, big time, introduced me to The Course in Miracles, taught me many, 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 many important lessons about the power of love and the weakness of illusion. She taught me responsibility. She taught me to uh, wake up. And once again, now that I'm in midlife, she has written a book about the age of miracles. The idea of the book is that we actually become deeper and more spiritual as we grow older and wiser as we grow more enlightened. I'd like to read to you a, a really quick quote here from Marianne's book. And I had often <laughs> listened to Otis Redding's song myself, and she refers to Otis Redding's song uh, where he's sitting resting his bones. And she wrote, who needs to rest their bones, I thought. Now, of course, I know. And when I first had the thought that one day that I was just sitting there resting my bones, I panicked. I thought it was all over if my bones were tired. But then I realized something like a guilty secret. I was enjoying just sitting there. I wasn't attending a retreat trying to enjoy sitting. I really, really was enjoying sitting. It was the actual kinetic experience of a rocking chair experience that I never thought I would enjoy that much. These things can really be helpful, I thought. Who knew? I didn't feel the need to get up, go anywhere else, or do anything at all. With less adrenaline came less distraction, and I felt no need to justify my existence by achieving or performing anything else. And that's when I realized this is very different, but it isn't bad. Sometimes when we appear to have lost, it's simply that we are leaving things behind. Perhaps our systems just let things go as we move through and on. The mind is its own kind of dance floor. What this generation could do from our rocking chairs could literally rock the world. And that really, really spoke to me because across the street, over in uh, at the Moana Surfrider Hotel, there are a line of rocking chairs. Maybe you can see them. I'll try to show you. Over there, see in the sunset, see the flagpole? The front porch of the Moana Hotel has 25 big old fashioned rocking chairs. And one of the things I really like to do there you see the evening coming over the sacred Moana Valley and the canal. One of the things that I really have enjoyed doing since moving to Waikiki is rocking in those wonderful rocking chairs. And thank you, Marianne, for giving me permission to do that after a most active life and yet a life that is adjusting as you said to the age of miracles you say in the back sometimes what we appear to have lost is simply something that it was time to leave behind perhaps our system just let something go anyway marianne thank you thank you thank you for writing this book right on time I would really like to meet you. I have a website and I also have a book and two movies that I'd like to send to you if you or uh, some friend of yours could uh, grace me with your address because I have accepted your challenge in more ways than one. As a child of the 60s, as you were, uh, we did the drugs, sex, and rock and roll thing. And also, as you said, we got tired of the partying and we realized that we are leaving behind a world, a civilization, that is either going to self-destruct or it's going to take the next quantum leap 
up to making Earth a paradise. Hawaii has taken a number of steps towards uh, that idea of life is supposed to be beautiful and fun with a great respect for nature, with a great respect for the gods of nature and the spirits of nature, for the powers of nature, for the beauties of the planet itself. Gaia, Mother Earth. And uh, anyway, I've done a couple projects to support your peace initiative in the world and your initiative uh, of, of asking us to take responsibility to leave behind a culture and a civilization that is uh, going to serve our children and help our children live on a planet that thrives, a planet that really does have a golden age, uh, an age of God rather than an age of materialism. Let me turn down my music a minute and I'll continue. So anyway, I've done a couple projects. One project is my book, Uncle Tom's Classroom, which I would really, really like to send to you. It's how one public school teacher awakened his students to the cosmic super self within. It's a true story of what happened to me as a Neo, like in the Matrix, working for the school system for 37 years, starting in the Peace Corps, moving on to the Teacher Corps, and working, uh, teaching every single grade in the San Francisco public school system from kindergarten all the way through uh, high school, through eighth grade. And I learned over the years, well, I actually woke up. I was extremely dedicated. I really loved my kids. They really loved me. But I began to notice that as they kept packing in more kids in our classes, and putting more pressure on us with this ridiculous sham called No Child Left Behind, which is just a torture chamber of testing for teachers, administrators, children, and parents. The more I realized that they had turned the public school system into a uh, indoctrination camp, a brainwashing camp for producing little worker bees who had no idea that they had an inner super self, what we call our soul, our spirit, our God self, our supreme divine consciousness, our inner observer, as quantum physics says. So I uh, got permission basically from the administrators, the parents, and even my kids, and uh, embarked on about a 10-year project to come up with a curriculum that would uh, not only not put kids to sleep into the materialistic uh, paradigm, but would wake them up to who they really are, as you know. And Marianne, you talk about that in your book. You remember as a child, you remember the joys of the Garden of Eden. This is the Garden of Eden out here. We are in the Garden of Eden. And as children, we realize that. We're very aware of that. And then we're dragged to preschool or kindergarten where we're pushed into a large group and we're treated as if we are going to become some kind of little worker bee, labor oriented cogs in this giant economic capitalistic uh, <coughs> world merry-go-round. Each, I. What I saw teaching, Marianne, was kindergarten, they come in pretty happy. First, second grade, pretty happy still. Third grade, you begin to lose at fourth and fifth grade. Fifth, sixth grade is the cusp. I love teaching sixth grade because it was the last chance I had to keep the children in the Garden of Eden uh, co consciously and allow them to experience their childhood as the golden time that it really is when they're still connected to who they are. And then seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade, I began to notice that they bought into the pressure. They were pressured by society, by the media, by their peers, by government, by No Child Left Behind, by uh, the state mandated testing system. They were forced to buy into this. You got to go to a good college, you got to get a good education, you got to go to the top.